Let's tune into Instagram. We got a question from Kevin. What do you think are the biggest systemic contributors to chronic illnesses and chronic addiction? Now, this for more context, he said, I really want to hear Ryan's point of view Mm. on this. Mm. And so, Ryan, I got to thinking the opposite of addiction is not sobriety. It's purpose. And I learned that from Johan Hari. We had him on the podcast. Mm -hmm. And he wrote this book about the nine causes of depression. Yeah. And what's fascinating is someone has a sense of meaning and purpose and they're driven in their own lives, Mm -hmm. the addiction loses its draw. It's not nearly as compelling. And during the break, when we were just chatting with the live stream here, you and I were talking about our upbringings, our our childhoods, Mm. and we had parents who were addicted to drugs and alcohol. And I think a lot of that had to do not with the addiction itself, but with a lack of purpose in their lives. They, They had almost lost the plot in a way. I love uh, Johan Hari talks about the rat village. Yes. You remember this? Uh-huh. So uh, do you know about this, DK? No, I don't. What so there was an experiment done where you had a, uh, a group of rats or a rat or whatever it was, and they were in a cage and they were given two different waters. One was filled with a uh, 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 lace with cocaine and the other one was regular water. So um, that was one group of rats. The second group of rats, they had the same water, regular water, and then one laced with cocaine. But they had um, basically like a rat village playground. Paradise. Paradise, yeah. It was so like they rat could, heaven. Yeah, like teeter-totters and, you know, different d- different right. um, activities that they could do. So <clears throat> the rats, um, all of them, uh, eventually, you know, they tried the cocaine water. And the ones that were in the village, they stayed away from it. They, they tried uh, it once. They tried it once, didn't like it, um, uh, stayed away from it, and they started going to the regular water. The rats who were just in a cage with nothing, they drank the cocaine water, and they it just they basically killed themselves. And what the experiment shows is what Josh was talking about. Like when you have something to do, when you have a purpose, when you have a community, mm-hmm. when you're excited about what's going on around you, you're less likely to... Um, form an addiction to 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 a bad substance. So, yeah, no, that was a great yeah, that was a great podcast with him. Um, yeah, we'll link that in the show notes for sure. Yeah, we did an episode with him. Also, uh, I interviewed him for Love People Use Things, Alabama. Do I have a copy of I'll put up here? Because so, there are some pages in there we could read from just to talk about this. But for sure, TK. In the meantime, I'd love to get your thoughts on addiction because. When we're talking about addiction, what we're really talking about is the drug is so compelling or other thing that we're addicted to as well, whether it's food, something no, we got to, we have to talk about what an addiction is. And yeah. we're not addic- addicted to oxygen, even though I breathe all the time because it doesn't get in the way of living my life. In fact, not breathing would really get in the way of living my life. Mm. An addiction is something that gets in the way of living a meaningful life, a mm. fulfilled life. And it may be a temporary fix or feel like a temporary fix, but quite often it does the opposite for us. It gets in the way yeah. of us communing with one another. Hmm. Yeah, sounds like government. No, I'm just kidding. What if I just went on like government? <laughs> <laughs> the TK's anti-government tweet of the week. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> what if I just turned everything into like, yeah, that's like the, the problem with government. It's <laughs> the problem with regulation. <laughs> oh my goodness. We are regulated. No, let's, it's a depression. Let's talk about it. You know, Josh, you, you, you talked about being addicted to coffee, but that doesn't get in the way of... I think it does, though. Does it? Okay. And, and so... Uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm making a commitment here on the podcast for the rest of this month. And I mean this month, uh, not the day this comes out because that would just be three days. <laughs> Although that'd be the longest I've gone for with. I mean, yeah. I did a three day break from coffee when I was 29. Oh, really? And I remember it was the first time I ever left work early. I had that big of a headache. So I'm going to wean myself off over the next three days. Can and you do the green tea? I'm going to do no caffeine for no the rest caffeine. of the month. No caffeine. Okay. So you're, you're, you're renouncing caffeine for a few days. Yeah. For, for the rest of the month. Okay. Really. All right. Yeah. And wow. uh, in doing that, when I say it might be getting in the way, because is it stealing my electrons as we talked about with Dr. Tennant earlier? And mm. if so, then maybe because I have a chronic illness, mm-hmm. maybe that will help. It's not going to heal me, but it will aid in the healing process. It'll make room for the healing. Yeah. 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 Hey, let me let me get a point in about this purpose and addiction stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh cuz the question is about systemic contributors, not like um what what's the one single cause, but what are some influencers, yeah. right, that are happening at a systemic level. So, 
um, I, I never get his name right, but I think it's like Mihaly uh, Csikszentmihalyi. He's the author of Flow, The Psychology of Optimal Performance. Uh-huh. Okay. One of the things he talks about is that in order to have that sense of purpose or meaning, you need to have challenges in your life that have the sensation of being voluntary. So when we go to our jobs, technically that's voluntary. Like we're choosing to do that, Mm. but we often don't have the sensation of it being voluntary and we express ourselves in that way. I have to go to work, right? Which is why we tend to enjoy games more because games give us these challenges, but we are also very conscious of the fact that we're choosing to play the game. Mm. So why do people watch football, basketball, even though they get angry when their team loses? Because there's the aliveness and the the sense of adventure that comes with being able to be disappointed, but also having a choice. I can not care about this. So when you think about purpose, most of us are raised with a mode of education that doesn't teach us how to select our own challenges and adventures because most of our challenges and adventures are assigned to us. What are the books you read at school? Well, not the books that you choose, but the books that the teachers choose for you. And they grade you on how well you can complete an assignment that was chosen for you. Mm. But the most important aspect of education isn't your ability to complete the assignment, it's your ability to pick the assignment. People that turn out to be purpose-driven and fulfilled and live meaningful lives, they are good at picking the assignment, which is why when you go to the library, when you go to Barnes & Noble, or when you have a problem, you know how to find a book, find a YouTube video, find a resource that helps you get answers to the questions that are yours. And that's what children have to be taught. So one systemic contributor wow. is we educate our children to be good at following instructions, not to be good at manufacturing meaning through the, through the making of their own choices. Mm, dude, that is, that's enlightening, man. I uh, never looked at it that way. And I'll tell you, um, when we were working at our corporate jobs, it didn't feel voluntary. Yeah. Even though it was voluntary. I mean, you're right, it is, but it did not feel that way. And I mean, I had to eat some pain pills before I would go to work because it would numb that feeling of anxiety. It would, uh, it it would make it okay that, you know, it just made things better. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Like I never associated it with the voluntary thing, but there is something with, uh, the minimalists like we, um, this is work. I mean, there, there, there's work that we have to do, but we get to do it. We get to do it. Yeah. And it's funny because like when I broke my back, I got a big old bottle of pain pills and I was worried. Um, I had Mariah lock them up. I'm yeah. like, only give them to me like as yeah. as prescribed. And yeah. um, like, I don't want to have access to like, just take as many as I want. And she like totally helped me with that. But it was interesting. Like, I never even thought about going back to those um, during uh, uh, having that broken back, even though I got a little bit of a pain pill buzz, you know, every every once in a while. But I realized like, oh, like I'm not running from anything now. Mm-hmm. And where before when I was really addicted to drugs, it was I was I was constantly running. Yeah. So when you have nothing to run from and um, when I have nothing to run from, I'm yeah. way less likely to start um, feeding those addictions. Did you enjoy this standalone Patreon highlight? If so, you can listen to full episodes of The Minimalist's private podcast available exclusively on Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash the minimalists or click the link in the description. Your support keeps our podcast and YouTube channel 100% advertisement free.